We are too much alike. Batman's Antithesis, Wrath, Comic Book Origins Created by Michael W. Barr and Michael Golden in 1984, Wrath was one of the most intelligently created villains of Batman. While many claims that Batman's villainous counterpart is the Joker, they seem to ignore Wrath, a man who lost his criminal parents on the same day Bruce lost his law-abiding parents. But while one orphan child took the thorny path of righteousness, the other treaded on the apparent bed of roses that was crime. Both of them wished to exact revenge on the people who made them orphans. But while Batman sought to protect, Wrath aimed to destroy. In this video, we will explore the magnificent villain and explore the three different iterations of Wrath as seen in Batman Special Number 1, Batman Confidential Issues 13 through 16, and a stunning episode from the animated show, The Batman. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Get out of here. Batman's Antithesis, Wrath, Comic Book Origins, appearing for the first time in Batman Special Number 1, or the player on the other side. Wrath proved to be one of the most perfect anti-Batman characters, but before we go into his tragically dark yet venomous story, it's important to note the philosophical origins of the character. Back in the day, English biologist Thomas Henry Huxley quoted the title or phrase in one of his speeches. He was trying to emphasize the importance of education on young minds and how it impacted our understanding of nature. He spoke of nature and humans to be the opposing sides of a chessboard, so the player on the other side may play by the rules, but they're always unforgiving towards any and all mistakes. Writer Barr adopted his concept and gave it a darker spin to create wrath. In this one shot, Barr gave the story a sheen that's unapologetically and consciously comic book-like. The chessboard transformed from an abstract philosophical concept to a Gotham where Batman was fighting his evil counterpart. Batman, who was the harbinger of justice and protector of law, was now struggling to make Gotham get rid of Wrath, who was the dispenser of evil and destroyer of law. The comic begins with a reflection of Gotham's grim underbelly and dark reality. The night Bruce Wayne was left orphaned by Joe Chill, another child was left orphaned. But unlike Bruce's upstanding parents, this child's parents were criminals who were shot down by a cop who was none other than James Gordon. Both the orphaned children swore to avenge their parents' death. But while Bruce took up the mantle of Batman to dedicate his life to eliminating crime and criminals, the other kid became Wrath, a reckoning for everything righteous and especially the keepers of law and order. That is, cops. Many years after the murder shook the lives of Batman and Wrath, the latter returned to Gotham to assassinate Gordon, who was now serving as commissioner of Gotham. Wrath makes two attempts on Gordon's life but fails, and subsequently, Batman takes Gordon to a safe house. Wrath investigates Batman's life and whereabouts, only to learn that Batman visits Crime Alley every year on the death anniversary of Wrath and Bruce Wayne's parents. Quick enough to figure out that Batman was Bruce Wayne, he tricks Batman out of Wayne Manor, only to defeat Alfred. Meanwhile, Batman himself begins an investigation into this mysterious assassin and visits Grail Hudson, the heir to a crime family and mortal enemy of Gordon, who has sided with Wrath. But Wrath seems to be a step ahead of Batman. He abducted Leslie Tompkins and wanted Commissioner Gordon as a ransom. Batman and Gordon devise a plan to save Leslie and take care of Wrath one way or another. Batman and Gordon meet Wrath on a rooftop, where Wrath shoots Gordon in the chest. His bulletproof vest was attached with fake blood packs, and Wrath assumes that his criminal parents had been avenged. But when he was trying to kill Batman, Gordon surprised Wrath in a desperate attempt to escape. Wrath started a fire, but became a victim of his own conspiracy, ultimately falling down the rooftop to his death. That was Wrath's story from the first iteration, but Wrath is a unique character because he has more than one iteration. Published in 2008, the Batman Confidential Story arc includes Wrath, who is a bit different from his 1984 version. Right from this entry into the comics, the reader is made aware of his murderous grudge against law enforcement. He kills an unfortunate cop named Pilchard, who was probably on night patrol. Later, Gordon summoned Batman and showed him the crime scene footage caught on a nearby security camera. For a moment, it seemed that it was Batman who killed Pilchard so it's not difficult to assume how similar Wrath and Batman were, even appearance-wise. 
Batman left to meet Grail Hudson once again. Knowing that she would be aware of Wrath's mysterious reappearance, he confronts Hudson about Wrath and asks if Wrath faked his own death, which was a thought that seemed to disturb Hudson. Batman assured that this new killer in town must be Wrath's copycat. Later, Batman and Alfred brief Nightwing on their last episode with Wrath, and meanwhile, Wrath abducts Grail Hudson. To make things worse, Gotham was hosting a national cop convention. Gordon ensured high security for all attendees and gave them escorts, but one of these cops, Rodriguez, seemed to be overconfident and left for the parking without an escort, only to be shot down by Wrath, however. When Wrath came closer to check on Rodriguez, the seemingly dead cop turned out to be Batman. As the comic proceeds, we learn that the new Wrath was actually a protege of the original Wrath, and this kid was to Wrath what Robin was to Batman, an efficient sidekick. Sometime later, Batman reads Gordon's house to learn more about Wrath's past and Gordon's connection to it. However, before he could do that, the new Wrath attacked Batman. As they battled for supremacy, Nightwing went to check on Gordon, but Wrath had already planted an explosive in the house and detonated it. The blast seemingly killed Gordon and Nightwing. However, an infuriated Batman chased Wrath away, only to be threatened by Wrath with a massive machine gun. Wrath wanted to destroy a police chopper before he slew Batman but the Cape Crusader managed to avert the tragedy and escape without getting hurt. Batman then visits Gordon's house and learns that Nightwing had saved himself and Gordon by escaping into a panic room. Somewhere else, we see Wrath extracting Grail Hudson from his lair and forcing her into his Wrathmobile. But unbeknownst to Wrath, Batman had tagged him with a GPS device. Batman and his efficient sidekick followed a signal coming from the Bat Beacon and reached Gotham Airport. However, Wrathmobile begins attacking the Batmobile. After a long and arduous fight sequence, they manage to save Grail and overpower Wrath. This new Wrath was revealed to be Elliot Caldwell, another orphan whom the original Wrath had abducted to train as a sidekick. After this, Wrath was sent to prison, but he swore to return and unleash his Wrath upon the protectors of Gotham. Who are you? Why are you doing this? Someone has to stand up to your kind. Joker's just trying to make Interesting origin story of the Wrath in the Batman animated show. Appearing in the 10th episode of the 5th season of Batman, Wrath made a grand mess in Gotham, and had it not been for one of his treacherous colleagues, Wrath would have destroyed Batman. The story begins with Batman and Robin trying to catch the Penguin, but the stout man was helped by Wrath and Scorn, evil counterparts of Batman and Robin. It turns out that Will and his younger brother Andrew were the children of notorious jewel thieves who were put in jail around the time Bruce was orphaned by Joe Chill. Yeah, well, it was a children's show, so the producers replaced the death of Wrath's parents with imprisonment. Over the years, the Mallorys became friends with Bruce and Dick, and would often hang out. These guys loathed Batman and the way in which he meddled with criminals. Will and Andy were of the opinion that Batman and Robin were obstacles to criminals who were simply trying to make a living, just like everyone else. Sometime later, the criminal duo helped Joker steal a million dollars in escape. After gaining the confidence of criminals like Killer Croc, the Ventriloquist, and Penguin and the Joker, the evil Batman doppelgangers called a meeting and offered to lead a heist that would make them richer than they could imagine. However, Batman and Robin foiled this plan, and the criminals had to escape. Unfortunately for Batman, Wrath learned his real identity and threatened to disclose it to the world, hence putting an end to the Bat Minutes once and for all. The Mallorys then attacked Wayne Manor and sought to destroy the Bat Cave and everything that Bruce had built. Clearly, the Mallorys had underestimated Gotham's Dark Knight and were subsequently overpowered. While in a police van, Wrath threatened to reveal Batman's identity to the other prisoners, hence sending them all after him. Batman and Robin discuss how their time as superheroes had been great, but just about then, Joker revealed himself and infected Wrath and Scorn with one of his permanent laughing gas canisters. It turned out that Joker couldn't stand anyone else taking away the pleasure of destroying Batman. He's really setting a couple of goals there. Wrath versus Batman. So. It must be evident by now that Batman and Wrath represent the two sides of the same coin. While they both lost their parents on the same night and a tragedy befell them, one chose to be the watchful protector of Gotham City, while the other chose to be a crime lord and destroyer of law and order. In this regard, he does resemble the Joker, 
who has always wished to spread anarchy and chaos throughout Gotham. But then again, unlike Joker, Wrath tends to be more sophisticated in his demeanor, appearance, and actions. Naturally, it seems that Wrath's mind was an amalgamation of the things he learned from his parents, the notion of vengeance from Batman, and the indomitable will to spread chaos and anarchy, probably adopted from Joker. Apart from this, Wrath had worked as hard as Batman as to become as powerful and tech-savvy as the Silent Guardian. Yet, no one comes close to the world's greatest detective, right? So, one way or another, Batman found himself dominating his evil twin from another mother. It is surprising that despite having a cool backstory and relatability with Batman, Wrath has not appeared in many animated shows, let alone live action. Nevertheless, we do hope that someday this guy makes an appearance in one of the DCEU's movies and thrills us with his astoundingly perfect comeback skills and a mind that's almost as sharp as Batman's. That was all in this video. Let us know what you think about Wrath. Is he worth being a Batman villain? And if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. You like fencing class, isn't it, old pal? You know who I am, don't you? I wish I did.